Welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm joining Alec, yay! Um, and we are discussing polycystic ovaries syndrome. Polycystic ovary syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> It, so yeah. I guess in in layman's terms, polycystic ovary syndrome is an imbalance in the hormones. So we have more testosterone, which is of the male hormone, <laughs> <laughs> which is the male hormone. Um, so causing us to be more hairy than most of you out there. <laughs> yeah, little so, cavemen over here. <laughs> yeah, little cavemen with our beards and our chest hair. Mm. But you know what? It's okay because I feel like not many people are aware that they even have it. Yeah. Um, I know I wasn't actually aware until I forced myself to go and get tested. And it's only because I was suffering with really bad cramps. And I was always a very hairy person. I've got Mediterranean heritage, so naturally I have got a hairy arm and it's quite dark hair, but I was getting a lot of facial hair. I was bleaching my tash. Woo. <laughs> winning <laughs> and so someone said why don't you go and get tested for polycystic ovaries so i did and it came back that my left ovary um in particular is basically riddled in cysts but they're not at the point of popping and they're not potentially that harmful other than the fact i'm just really hairy <laughs> <laughs> um, so mine was a similar diagnosis okay i but mine took five years to diagnose really yeah so I was like 20, yeah, 20, 21, no, 19 when it like really started to get bad. But I just put it down to like just getting older, periods were like maybe <laughs> got older, worse. Getting hairier. Maybe it got worse. <laughs> but like my the hairiness hadn't started yet oh, for me. So okay. I just couldn't, like, it came on quite slowly. Um, and then it's only over time that like, the hairiness has got worse, <laughs> which is great. Um, but yeah, mine started with just like really bad period pains. And then I went to the doctors. They were like, yeah, you've got high levels of testosterone, but that was it. And I was like, well, what does that mean? Brilliant. Um, and then there was one day where I was meant to be going to work and my period pains were so bad, I couldn't move. Like I couldn't oh, get down the stairs. Yeah, that's how my And I was were. just, my, my mum was like, you need to go to the doctors. Um, and then, yeah, when I had the scan, they're on both sides. So there's, like, cysts on both of my ovaries. But, yeah. They're not, like, harmful cysts, though. I want to yeah. make sure that, like, yes. anyone watching this is, like... It's not cancer. It's not... It, it, they're, like, a different... They're, like, they're called, like, polyps. They're, like... Yeah. They're, not, they're not, like, <laughs> actual... Just a little polyp. Little polyp. Um, they're not, like, bad. Yeah, they're not. They're not. They're not. They're not going to burst inside, and you're gonna, you know, combust on the inside yeah. out. They're not gonna do that. Um, so those of you watching that maybe think you have this or do have it, you are okay. Yeah. Um, my main concern when I first got diagnosed was not being able to conceive children naturally. That was my my like. I literally said to the doctor, "Will I be able to have kids?" Yeah. And she was just like, Meh. and I was like. <laughs> join me on the <laughs> panic like and i was just like what does that what does meh mean like she was like, like meh. yeah she was just like well yeah you should be able to but it might take longer or it might not happen or you might have to have ivf and i'm just like i didn't really like when i was i was 23 24 when mm -hmm. i was diagnosed so i wasn't like i need kids now but like to have that top like said to you when yeah, of course. You think everything's fine. Yeah. yeah. And then it's kind of like, does that mean I need to prep earlier? Like, I'm not ready to have kids yet, but does that mean I need to come off contraception so that I can, like, get used to it? Because I know mm. you yeah. have come off of it. And yeah. is that because of that? Well, they... Sorry if you're, like, actually trying to have a baby. I'm like, <laughs> no, why are you all We're not trying to have a baby. I have a wedding dress to fit into. No baby is over here. <laughs> Um, yeah, my main concern was, can I conceive naturally? However, a lot of people with polycystic ovaries do manage yeah, they to. Yeah, do. Um, it just can sometimes not happen straight away. Yeah. Um, and obviously they, they say, I mean, I'm not an expert, you know, I've not had children or I'm not pregnant yet, but they say, obviously the more you think about it and the more you stress, the worse it becomes and the harder it is to then conceive. Yeah. So I think 
taking that into consideration with this, you have to just go with the flow. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, like Sophie said, I have recently come off contraception. So I had the implant for 10 years. Did 10 it, years? 10 years. It's a long it, time. It is a long time. That. Did it help? Years. I believe the implant was the best thing I could have done. Really? It stopped my periods, which is normal for an implant to do. Yeah. And I believe it helped the pains because I was still getting a period symptom, but it was really mild. And then I was having obviously no period, no yeah. bleed. So I was living for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely living for it. But 10 years is a long time. I'm at an age where, you know, I'm getting married. We're going to be looking at having children. So I wanted to come off it to let my body just try and be back to Normal, natural. Yeah. yeah. And just let my period cycle come back, I guess. Has it? It has, straight away. Really? The first month, straight away. Mm, and now I'm like clockwork. So I downloaded an app okay. called Flow. Okay. Do you have that one? No, because I'm on a pill that I just continually take. Ah, okay, so it's to manage the equivalent the to yeah. the implants, yeah. actually. Yeah. So I downloaded Flow, um, and now I track my period and I know when it's coming, I know what my symptoms are, and I must say, my symptoms are horrific. Yeah, I can, um, I, when I, <laughs> I don't back, remember this ever happening. When I think back to what I had, like, like, I'm not kidding you with the doubled over in pain, and like, yeah, I feel for you now. I am doubled over in pain. And that's what puts me off coming off of this, before yeah. I actually want to have kids, because yeah. I'm like, I feel, I agree, like, I want to get my body into a natural cycle. But I'm also like, can I actually bear <laughs> the, pain. the pain for no reason? Like, I think if I knew I was going to have kids, or trying to, yeah. you could get, I, I would be able to cope. So I have considered going back on the pill, it's that bad. Really? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, it's not great. I'm not going to lie to you, it's not great. And every time I have a period, I feel like within two weeks, we're bloody here again, and it's yeah. coming back. Because your hormones, like, affect so much of your so life. So much. And when you're, ha like, I've, I've been on the pill for nine years, so it's, it's kind of time. like, that is a long time to be on contraception for. And I had, like, a short break in between, but, like, nothing, like, for the majority of nine years I've been on yeah, it. Right? Yeah. And that's a long time to not really know who you truly are. Oh, yeah. It's, like, a weird thing. It's true, and it definitely may, I mean, I think coming off it, I've been a worse person. Do you think? Yeah. Well, a hundred percent. I'm up and down. sure Billy would agree. <laughs> <laughs> like ninety nine point nine percent he'd agree. Um, in terms of the week before, I am seriously aggy. Yeah. Like to the point where the smallest things are actually just really great on me now. Okay. And then the week during, because mine's a seven day. Right. Long, full on. Full on <laughs> period. Yeah. yeah. Woohoo! Love it. Um. And I'm just ratty and miserable because I feel gross when I'm on a period. Yeah. I just don't feel... It doesn't make you feel good. No, and my OCD just doesn't cope with feeling dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's not a dirty thing. Yeah. It's completely normal and I'm all for it being spoken about in that way. I just... My OCD doesn't allow it to make me feel good. Right. So you're stressing even kind of before it's happened. Yeah. And then it makes everything like, oh, worse. I need to be in the bath all yeah. day. <laughs> Um, and then the second it's done, I'm a bit better, but I'm quite emotional, more emotional than I was on the implant. Mm. But again, is it just that my hormones are trying to balance back out to not having yeah. the, the hormones that the implant give you? Yeah. And then, of course, I'm taking into my polycystic ovaries now that they are now coping in a different way. They don't have this hormone balancing yeah. everything out. Yeah. We're now back to square one again where everything's like full on, yeah. let's go, here I am, causing yeah. you pain. <laughs> and they already cause... Here I am. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> they already cause a hormone imbalance anyway. Exactly. So, like, when you're pumping yourself with extra hormones, your body literally doesn't know. Yeah. So it's just like... Ah, <laughs> it's just a big mess. Yeah. <laughs> Massive mess. Yeah. Um, I guess, like, other symptoms, so we've got, like, pain... There's like weight gain as well. There so is. I haven't you heard don't that. Have that. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I I really really struggle to lose weight with it. That's um, interesting. But like, it's a very really common one, isn't it? It's a very yeah. common side effect. And 
but like so many doctors are like well it would help if you lose weight i'm like yeah, but how like honestly how can i lose weight because my hormones are just, anyway. yeah and it's just like it's all over the place mm-hmm. so that i don't feel like that's very helpful advice basically because <laughs> i'm just like if you can't do anything about it i don't know yeah. it's a hard one i think that goes also with um there are certain foods that if you do have positive ovaries can be avoided yeah so i think one of those is potatoes yeah, it's quite like isn't it starchy? And, yeah, and yeah. I think starchy foods are quite bad for it. It like she basically says who eats chips all the time. I think it like <laughs> feed they like the hormone or like something like feeds off of it. It's just like, like yes. Just to clarify, we are not like doctors no, and no, experts no, no. on this, so we're just going off like our personal opinions and what we know through having this syndrome. Yeah. So and research and research that we've on, done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just to clarify. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to tick a few boxes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, what's really interesting with polycystic ovaries is that one in five women in the UK will have it. Yeah. And, and not necessarily, not necessarily no. Um, but if you do feel like you can relate to what we're saying, then please do book yourself in with your GP because it's really important to get it sorted. Agreed. Um, with the hairiness. We, yeah. I'm loving your hairy arms. Like because I finally so feel like someone hairy. else has them. <laughs> it's just like this bit, like this bit's You can probably see in. this from here how dark that hair is. I mean it look how dark it is. But then you've got dark skin. I, I wouldn't look at that and be like, she's got bronze to go. And I honestly when I was younger wanted to shave it off. Don't shave it off. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't. Don't. But but yeah, listen to Sophie. Literally, don't. don't. Um, But I did bleach it with like bleach hair dye for my arm. And then actually it was worse because then they were like really prominently blonde (laughs) against (laughs) my dark (laughs) arm. And it was like, what has she done to her arm hair? So I just leave them. I honestly, I don't even care anymore. I also went through a stage of like, was really nervous about dating guys Mm. And having my arms out and then being hairier than them guys' arms. Yeah. And like, oh my god, I used to just want to cringe if they had a smooth arm and I had really hairy arms. Hairy arms, like, oh my god. <laughs> um, but again, I think it comes with like getting older and you become a bit more confident. And do you know what? There's nothing I can do. No, and also it's more maintenance. Like, yeah. can you actually be bothered? <laughs> To have to worry about that too. <laughs> it's just like, no, I can't. I really no. can't. And I haven't got the money to either. So yeah. it's just like, no. And you know what? A lot of girls have dark arm hair, yeah. so it's fine. Yeah, I get like this sort of like thick line here. Oh, I don't yeah. really get it. Like, here's absolutely, like, it is, you can see this hair. It's fair though, isn't it? But it's it? fair, whereas like, it's just this bit that's like thicker and darker. At least it's on the inside. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> not that we should be hiding it like let it all hang out these days right yeah i think the, the thing that bothered me the most like growing up was like a slight snail trail oh and i shaved it and I that's shaved. why i'm like i not? shaved it too i'm like don't shave because it literally has made it 10 times worse and now i'm just like oh no. so i shaved my snail trail too then my mum was like, what have you done? It's going to come yeah. back thick and black. And I was like, it's already yeah. thick and black. Um, so I tried electrolysis. Okay. And that scarred me. Fantastic. <laughs> so not only now have I got <laughs> thick black hair on my tum-tum, I've got scars on my tum-tum. Um, and then I have started waxing it now. And I have had laser on it a couple of times. Mm. But... I've actually just gone back to laser, uh, to waxing it. I think waxing. I, I just wax, wax get it off. Waxed, yeah, so, yeah. But it's always like embarrassing to the beautician. You're like, could you just do my tummy, please? <laughs> but I actually think if I did, uh, if we actually went around town and asked how many women have the hair on the tummy, I bet you majority of people would say yes. Yeah, they would. They it's really just would. not something people talk about. No, because it's embarrassing. Uh, for some, it is. I mean, it is a bit. To, I mean. Because I wouldn't walk around in a bikini with, with it hanging it. out. No, me neither. Like, <laughs> it's it's got to go. <laughs> it's literally like, ugh. And if I was in a new relationship, I would be really stressed about it. Yes, me too. Like, I was I was stressed about it for years. Yeah. I was like, you really 
get rid, get rid. Whereas now I'm like, okay, I'll just wait till my legs wax. And the reason for the non-shaving is I was always then embarrassed that um, if a guy was, you know, touching me, yeah. he'd feel the spike. Yeah. And be like, why is she spiky in the wrong area? There it is. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. yeah, just don't shave the hair that you've got, and especially when it comes to your facial hair. Yeah, no. So I am going through laser hair removal at the moment for my jawline and my neck. Um, and they advise that you shave in between treatments. However, that really doesn't sit that well with me. So I trim it with scissors. Like, yeah, I get nail scissors and I trim it down. So if he's like looking at it and I'm like, oh my god, you no, can no, see no, it! No, 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 I can't. I'm just thinking like you can't actually can't. I wouldn't oh, know you have it done. Can, you can. No. You can. <laughs> you can. But I also like I would ne I would not shave my. I think there's something like I just couldn't bring myself. No, to I couldn't either. My razor on my face. But I mean, I'm touching it, and if you just like touch there, you can actually feel the hair. Okay, but you, you can't see. see it. So. I think it's getting lighter yeah. and finer but the like more laser I'm having. Yeah. Whereas there is probably a few little thick black ones. No, I can't see poking them. out. And I do sometimes feel like I wake up and there's like a new thick black hair. Don't tweeze them. Oh, see, I tweeze mine out <gasps> so bad. Mine of rank. I like get like a mini beard out of my mole under my chin, and I'm like, I thought this happened to like eight year olds. So I'm like, what? <laughs> what is happening to me? And then I get my like horrible moustache you get here i think a lot of us have this though yeah we do right whether you have polycystic yeah. ovaries or not a lot of us have this i used to bleach mm. now i wax it i bleach mine but yeah that's because mine isn't awful it's just like this bit's bad yeah the corners the corners of the little whiskers <laughs> the little whiskers i love it so yeah that's the bit that i'm like Ooh. And then in certain lights, like nice light, like yeah. sunlight, I'm like, whoa. Same, sunlight, I'm very cautious. Especially yeah. actually when I walk Miko around the park, I'm very cautious that if I stop to talk to fellow dog walkers, I could be standing in a certain light where they can see <laughs> all this black hair and then think, what is going on with her? <laughs> like becoming the woman from this, yeah, this is me song. <laughs> turning into like a werewolf as I stand in the park with my dog. <laughs> <laughs> but I would recommend laser hair removal. I had it on my um, Hollywood area and the tops of my thighs. So when I was in a bikini, the pubic hair was literally growing so thick out of the side of it. Oh my God, mine is awful. And I was like, I can't do this. I was waxing all the time, but then I was getting really bad ingrown hairs yeah. because the hair is so coarse. So I decided to pay for laser hair removal. This is going back maybe like five years ago now. And it was the best thing I ever did. So after having the laser hair removal on this region, now when it comes back, it's just like baby hair. Okay. It's really fine and I hardly have to shave at all now. Which is good. Yeah, it's really good. And when you're on holiday, I don't have this awful like rash coming out of the yeah. side or big thick black pubic hair yeah. coming out of the side. I'm really glad I'm engaged right now. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I have to wax, like, I ha just have waxing done, because then might be... Do you not get ingrown hairs? Yeah, I do. It's really bad. But then I'm also just, like, learning to... L like, it's getting thinner, though. Yeah. So, like, it is working. It's just kind of... It will take some time. I've heard about sugaring, but I've never tried it. Mm, I'm not really sure about it. <laughs> I'm just I don't know. I can't really imagine, like, sugar. someone just, like, rubbing... Do they rub sugar? I think so. Just, like... Maybe we should try it and film yeah. it. <laughs> I'll take Sophie to a sugaring <laughs> session. <laughs> Sounds a bit naughty, that. It does. <laughs> I think like the hair thing is just the worst bit about it. Yeah, I think so too. And if you are affected by the hair, just try and do something that's not shaving. Like if you want mm. to look into laser or bleaching. Um, so there's a really good brand called Jolen. Yeah. It's Jolen, isn't it? Yeah. And that is, they do, they do one for light hair and dark hair, I think. Um, so you can use that to bleach this area or any other areas you have. We both have really bad chest hair, yeah. too. <laughs> chest really hair. Great. Actually have chest hair. My friends have spotted it and I'm just like, yeah. Like, <laughs> yes. Here I am. <laughs> it's like little, little bits. <laughs> just there. 
it's getting darker as well. I'm like, what the hell? But yeah. But if I go in the sun, it does all go lighter. Yeah. I need a holiday. Yeah. Like we just need to be permanent. We need to just live in the sun, basically, and then you wouldn't see it as much. But um, hey, it is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's good to talk about it and raise awareness because a lot of people are embarrassed and. To an extent, I still do get embarrassed about it. Yeah, there is, isn't it? Yeah. Um, because I guess as a woman, you're, you're seen to be like all beautiful and smooth and no bodily hair. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you've got a Loads woman who's got chest <laughs> there. And also I think there's like that <laughs> contradiction of like, we're, we would both stand up and say we're feminists, I think. Like we would, but then there's also like, people will be like, yeah, but then why are you waxing? Why are you, why are you waxing? Yeah, then? so actually that's interesting because I don't think I would say I'm a feminist. Would you not? I don't think so. Because, only because when people say the future's female, I really disagree with that. I know. My I, future's not female. Yeah, I'm married, I don't I'm agree getting with getting married to a guy. Female. Yeah. <laughs> <I don't> like, <laughs> I'm, you know? So no. I don't agree with future as female, but I agree, I, with feminism, I think it, like, for me, feminism is about equality. Like, I've been in the place, that, I workplace, believe. where I haven't been paid the same as a man. Okay, that, yes. And that is where I see feminism. I don't see, like, how having hairy armpits makes you a feminist. Okay, I'm with you. So, with that, you. so I think the term feminist probably needs to be changed. changed. Or, like, it's gone too far. Yeah, okay. So if, if that's what we're defining as, then yes, I am. Yes. But if it's a futurist female thing, then no, no, I'm not. And I agree with you there. <laughs> I'm definitely not. <laughs> you need both. You need both. Oh, you yeah. do. The world goes round, yeah. you know, with, you know, and we can all be equal. I mean, I probably have more arm hair than my boyfriend. Like, <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah. It's totally fine. Wax and Jolin on your ma on your tash. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> the magic stuff. <laughs> this this is the stuff that's gonna make your chest hair go blonde. <laughs> so it's really simple to do. We were gonna do it for you, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of hassle involved, and I don't know if you really all want to see that. So you mix it up, follow the instructions, slather it on the areas. You sit there with a little white tash, yeah. a little white beard, uh, chest hair. Yeah. And then you leave it for what? Is it fifteen minutes? Or yeah. Something? And you can kind of like t you can see it on yourself, like when you need to take it off. Yeah, and don't be alarmed if it burns. Yeah. It, it does. sort of feel like it burns because it's essentially dying hair. Yeah. But also, like, if it's really bad, just take, take it off. It off. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe do a patch test. Yeah. And I really hope. You don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Thank you so much for watching and joining me and Alex on this discussion of polycystic ovary syndrome. If you have it or think you have it, then you can obviously ask us any questions. Um, book yourself into a GP, buy some bleach. I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> buy some laser hair in yeah. packages. <laughs> <laughs> Not the cheap ones. Don't just go for like a deal. That's another tip. Um, but yeah, thank you so much and we'll see you soon. Bye.